Hi guys. I was going to say good afternoon, but it's actually good. No, it is a good afternoon. It's not good morning. It's good afternoon, so I got it wrong twice. Ooh. You're liking my story, are you? No, I just I just quickly put a story on my Instagram illustrating the Astrid suit. What have we got? What are we looking at? Okay, okay. Oh man, I love you guys so much. You actually make my dreams feel like they're possible, so thank you for that. On my last YouTube video, I got 100 views, which I'm pretty ecstatic about. Because that technically means that one eighth of you have have watched my YouTube, which I'm really, really pleased about. So, let's get started. It's going to be quite annoying when I move out of the shot, so maybe I will also use the GoPro, because, let's face it, I don't need to be resourceful when I have all the resources. I just need to use damn resources. Okay. Oh, well, thank you. Pay. Keeping my bills paid. <laughs> okay, uh, how shall I do this? I don't want to say it's going to be a long YouTube video again because the last one was 45 minutes, which is just unacceptable. No one should talk for 45 minutes. And the worst part is, how long do you think I spent talking for me to cut it down to 45 minutes? Huh. I'm not actually going to share that information. No one needs to know that. <laughs> And I'm not a talkative person, really, I wouldn't say. You like my face? Gee, thanks. Just bought it. Nice. So, video. And I also won't make the mistake of listening to music. Because I will be thrown off YouTube before I get to my second video. I know it. <laughs> I got a warning the first time. So, uh, what should we do? The only problem, thank you, oh thank you, thank you, um, so the only problem with the GoPro is that I can't actually see what it's recording so I don't know whether the angle is any good, it's really the best, so maybe I could show you what is going on here, does that work? Does that look like something that might work? I suppose we won't know until we do. This one leg just doesn't stand properly. Okay, that's gonna... Maybe I should get it out of shot because it's gonna be really annoying. Is that gonna work? Oh, should we just try? I don't know. Here goes. So, happy Saturday, happy weekend. Not that the weekend brings anything different to the table. Every day is like a weekend at the moment. Well, no, it's not really. I still work every day. But in terms of having any real routine, it's a bit of a struggle at the moment. So, I'm working from home, as you can see. Um, this, like, studio equipment has all been brought from work to home. So, yeah, there's not really a whole load of room, to be honest. So. Okay, what will I do first? What will I do? What will I do? What will I do? Uh, today. What are we going to be doing today? So, we are going to be making the... It's going to be called the... It's not going to be called. It is already called the Arizona Suit. Um, this is a beautiful bottle green fabric. I just love this colour. I'm obsessed with this colour. Sometimes I work with lighter weight fabrics. It means that I generally try to use the direction of stretch so but when I talk about the direction of stretch I mean as in when you're working with um, contour clothing so any like jersey anything that has elastic within the fibres um, you want the greatest amount of stretch to run across the body not down you want it to run across so the width of the garment so for example um, as you can see with this fabric that is not the greatest amount of stretch. We have the greatest amount of stretch coming from the opposite direction. Um, so I would 
funnily enough, generally work opposite to my, most people and would work with the smallest amount of stretch working across the body. Um, just because I'm working with lighter fabrics, lighter weight fabrics, um, so they respond entirely differently. I don't like to work with lighter weight fabrics, I like to work with medium weight fabrics, but this is a very heavy weight fabric. So we're going to do the opposite, I'm going to work with um, the greatest amount of stretch wrapped around the body. So, bottle green fabric, um, I just love this colour. I don't know whether you can already tell from my Instagram, but I really do love like deep, brassy, um, earthy tones. That is, yeah, that is just my style. I hope it's yours as well. <laughs> I will be obviously bringing a lot of colour. Um, I won't go as far as saying neons, but there will definitely be, uh, yeah, good variation to colour. And print. I love print in swimwear. I love contrasting print. Um, yeah, just really beautiful abstract prints, but I just haven't been able to get my hands on them kind of fabrics as of yet. So I'm not really sure what you're doing down here. Oh, that's what you're doing. So you're just picking up my hands. Okay, so we are making a sample today that I need to send someone, but a sample is no less a swimsuit. So, okay, so when you're making any form of clothing, um, you are starting with a paper pattern, which t to me is what I struggle with the most. Um, I understand the basics of pattern cutting slash making. Um, it's not something that I enjoy as soon as I can relinquish that part of this job. Trust me, I will. Um, I've been looking for someone for a while now. I think I found someone, so fingers crossed for me. Is this outfit really overwhelming? I hope it's not. I hope it's not really distracting, but it's kind of distracting me when I look up at the camera. <laughs> So yeah, any garment, you will start with a paper pattern first. You're going to start with a master pattern. What is a master pattern? You might be lucky enough to be starting with, um, in the US, we, they call them slopers, we call them blocks, basic blocks, which essentially means today I want to make this style of t-shirt, but I'm going to start with a basic block and then I'm going to make alterations to that block so that it, it, it fulfills um, the design that I'm seeking. So, I don't have a basic block. That is something that I'm trying to get done at the moment. Um, when I started my first design, that became my basic block. So it was really just a one-piece swimsuit. And I make all my alterations from there. But at the moment, I'm trying to work to like solidify my ideal. Um, so, essentially, the, the base stripped back style of my swimsuit if it's going to be a one piece for example then what is the criteria for what sits within my brand and that's going to be like a high leg um kind of a cheeky bum not exposing too much um what is the torso like how does it come in on the waist um a really big and important thing to me with swimwear is how it sits on the hip i don't know whether you've already noticed but i do have quite wide hips um like most underwear swimsuits cut in on the side I mean I can feel it now with the underwear that I'm wearing they cut in on the hip and I hate that and the positioning that they cut in is where your hip actually goes out and it becomes wider um, so I aim or try my best to make sure that my suits don't cut you in on the hip um, that they do you know have like quite a relaxed fit around that area so that is something that I'm trying to fit within my ideal because that's really important to me and I've always said as well although first and foremost I love the design aspect of swimwear there is no good in me trying to perfect the design if the fit isn't up to scratch so if you ever wonder like oh why why hasn't she got much available for sale like I've noticed she's been doing this I don't know 18 months or something like that um like what can i buy what kind of suits are available how come she's not bringing out loads of different designs like most even small businesses do um i'm thinking more long term and i want the brand to breathe to, to be really wholesome and yeah i just want the fit to be perfect so i don't know whether you'll notice this as we go through the processes but it all starts on paper and this 
process is solidifying the fit of the garment meaning this is the most important part really the execution is very very important but this is no less the most important part um, how an item fits if you want to just talk about clothes in general and how we feel when we wear clothes it's all association I believe um, and something can look amazing and if it doesn't fit you properly or even when you think about design there is no good being design led if the fit isn't just perfect anyway so I'm not there yet but I'm gonna get there um, at the moment all my samples are done on me so what I've done literally for the last year paper pattern take a size chart my measurements that fit within a you know a size 10 to 12 I try not to work with my own body measurements I try and work with not that there's an industry size for 10 to 12 which can also be a bit confusing which is why you can obviously go into Topshop and be an entirely different size to H&M or Primark I mean Primark sizing at the moment I, I don't know whether this is just me but on their basic wear like their leggings I even tried to buy I didn't try to buy I bought them like a pair of um, biker shorts and I think they were like an 8 to 10 or a 6 to an 8 and these babies were huge like I probably can't even wear them as pajamas they were freaking massive um, so you are going to find that so I offer dual sizing for a reason um, again all this stuff's going to be looked at I'm trying to work with someone at the moment there's very wide realms for sizing which can be quite confusing for the consumer um, which is why when you buy clothes that are figure hugging for example jeans you're going to hold on to them babies because it's hard to find things that fit well swimwear is another really difficult one um, it has got to be really tight fitting um, I hope this is loud enough there's not really any way of me knowing until it's finished so maybe I'll just pick up the volume a bit I'm going to make a swimsuit so ideally you're going to start with um, a sloper or a basic block I don't do that because I don't have one I'm going to have that made for me and then all my designs from that point onwards um, will just come from this centre point be my basic block so I've never been able to do that it's in the making at the moment I start with a master pattern oh. okay let's stop there and record on the other one So yeah, we start with a master pattern. Any adjustments that you make, I believe, go into the master pattern. Um, and then you would trace over this, so you would trace over this quarter and it would make a production pattern. Obviously you would trace over the quarter but then you would flip it onto both sides, symmetrical. And it would make a production pattern. Then the production pattern is what you would use. It looks something like this. It's obviously got to be cut out because you're gonna cut round the fabric and um, the production pattern is what you would use to make your swimwear but when you make adjustments if i sampled this which is what i'll be doing soon if i cut this out of fabric and then made my sample up and i was like the leg is too high or you know uh, the crutch is too long or i want to increase the bus length all them alterations go into the master pattern and then i would have to trace off that again and make a new production pattern so the master pattern is like where all the good stuff happens uh, it's going to look a mess your production patterns will probably be quite clean but the, the master pattern is just going to be this overworked overused pattern um so yeah everything starts with a pattern it's really difficult um with any to make patterns for any form of clothing is difficult, but when you're working with contour clothing, um, there's many things that you have to consider. You have to consider like the amount of stretch in a fabric, the weight of the fabric, because this one pattern, if I sample this one pattern on a heavyweight fabric, um, the sample's going to fit entirely different to if I sampled this pattern on a lightweight fabric because the amount of stretch in that lightweight fabric is going to be entirely different. So I just have to remember and keep in mind that the fabric means that the, the pattern is just going to respond entirely differently every time. So I have to make sure I work with fabrics that are similar weights and also um, 
offer a similar amount of stretch. Another thing to consider when you make swimwear is that there's a thing called negative ease, which in most clothing, I won't try and go into, to, into the depths, um, mainly because I don't know the depths. <laughs> um, I'm not familiar with those depths. Most clothing has positive ease within it, within the pattern. Um, and the reason for positive ease is if I was to measure you and I measured your bust and your bust was like a 36 or your waist was a 30, that is the size of your shell essentially, the, the exact measurements of your body. Now if I was to take um, a piece of clothing and make it in those sizes, made to measure to fit you, that piece of clothing won't essentially fit you unless that item has a lot of stretch in it. But if it doesn't, most clothing doesn't. Um, most woven clothing doesn't, so like cottons, linens don't have a great amount of stretch, um, generally speaking. Therefore we have to add positive ease into them pieces of clothing in order to make them fit you but when we work with swimwear it's actually the opposite so if I was to make you a swimsuit and it fit your measurements perfectly it's not going to fit you let's just clear that up to start with um, it will stay on fine while it's on and then as soon as you get into water and that swimsuit gets heavy whew, there's your bits you know um, I want an even tan but I didn't want to show me nipples so yeah that's why we use negative ease and I think it runs it, it varies um, based on the brand but I believe I use something like 12 or 15 percent so this is one reason why I, tr I try not to do made to order very tricky thing sizing um, but I generally work 12 to 15 percent negative ease into my patterns um, Lycra is very forgiving, it's very stretchy. If you're a couple of inches bigger than you thought, a couple of, maybe not a couple of inches, yeah, maybe a couple of inches bigger than you thought, it's probably going to be absolutely fine. Um, there'll be a lot of people all, that are a medium in general terms, but when they wear swimwear, they say, I want an extra small. I love my swimwear to be really tight and I want, I want to feel. So it's, you know, almost like spanks essentially. I also like that but I find um, on the hip it can be quite unflattering around the bust, around the back, you know, I've got a bit of meat on my bone so it's really not that flattering. Um, so for example I could wear a small, I'm, I would say like I'm a 10 to 12 maybe, mm, a little bit bigger, I don't know, I don't tend not to measure or weigh myself. Um, but I could wear a small and probably get away with it in the same sense I could wear a large and get away with it but I do prefer the fabric to not wrinkle and crease around the torso I do like it to be quite uh, flattering around the form so we spoke about that sizing um, I don't offer 6, 8, 10, 12 which convert to like an extra small, small medium the reason being that I don't believe people always know and without knowing a brand and without having purchased and you know any form of clothing from a brand you don't really know how their sizing responds to you so I just what I do is I find the midway between them two sizes so if an A is X you can't really work X and Z can you because there's nothing between an X and a Z um, so yeah I'll offer dual sizes so if you're an A but you think oh, I would I would prefer it to sit a little bit tighter on me there's a six to an eight. I'm an eight, but I don't know how that this brand responds to sizing. I'm not. Sh I haven't tried anything from them before. Maybe I'll maybe I'll choose the eight to ten. That's the reason for it. That's what I prefer. I'm not perfect ten. I'm also not perfect twelve. My hips are quite big, but my bust is also fairly big. My waist is not small, so I'm just big all over. <laughs> um, so yeah, dual sizing works like that. Now what else do we need to cover? So yeah, I do manual pattern cutting at the moment. Um, you can also do it on the computer. I think there's like CAD, computer aided design and things like that. Um, it is probably easier, it's more precise. Um, there's probably not as many room for errors. It, it also allows your house and your office to be far tidier than mine will ever be because to give you an idea, this is just some of them, and there is heaps. 
heaps and heaps of pens at my uni. So like for example when I first started I would use um, a book like one of these is this Alfred Winifred oh what a cool name Winifred Aldrich I think that's pronounced or Anne Hagar pattern kind for lingerie beachwear and leisure wear so I've probably used a book like this sorry the computer and not the computer the camera just died it didn't die it stops recording after 30 minutes I would know that now because I'm on to my second YouTube video um, so you keep all your patterns the reason for this is when I first started and when I first made my swimsuit pattern, not my first swimsuit but my first swimsuit pattern, I used like one of the good old Winifred books. Not sure who that is but I can't technically open the door at the moment anyway. Buddy! Buddy! Enough! Enough! Saturday, the neighbours don't want to hear you. So keep all your patterns. I don't know whether this is going out to people that have an interest in pattern making or making swimwear or anything like that, but if you are making any form of clothing and you start with a pattern, keep the pattern. If you make your own patterns, I mean, a lot of people that make swimwear, not for sale, not for um, like commercial use, but just on a domestic level, you can buy patterns online. So you can actually skip this stage if you wish to. <clears throat> um, but you need to keep your patterns safe. And the reason for this, and I knew I was a holder for good reason. God, I've been defending that trait for years and I knew it was for a good reason. <laughs> um, is when I first started and I used one of the books, like the Metric Pattern Cutting Boots by Aldridge, Aldridge, Winifred. Um, good old Winifred my pattern was entirely different to how it is now i don't know whether i just cut out that bit from a minute ago but i've probably sampled the arizona suit so the first suit that i ever done 50 times sampled adjustment sample jump adjustment la 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 one vicious circle there's a reason why a few times i thought God, i don't know whether i can do this it's tough because every time you make a small adjustment to your pattern you have to sample it um, and I've also been so hopeful every time that I would get the desired effect that I've always made it out of the lycra that I intend to use. I've never even used like a cheap quality, like a jersey or something, because I've never found a fabric that will just respond the same. So every time I make it, I'm like, no, this might be it. I'm going to do the elastic, the straps, everything like it should be, because I might be on to the winner. You want to go 49 more turns to do um so yeah keep all your patterns reason being my pattern from like 18 months ago or a year ago was entirely different maybe the crotch was longer the torso was longer shorter smaller wider i'm not sure but the reason for that is okay you can turn off that's fine um i still haven't i still haven't got around to saying what the reason for that is the reason for that Oh yes, so I was going down a bit of a dark tunnel where I was just making all these adjustments, all these adjustments, and I'd say to Luke, I'm just going to resample the Arizona, and he would say to me, well, you can't resample it again, Kirsty. Like, it fits really well. People are saying that they like the fit of it. Why do you keep, you know, this is just a perfectionism. It's not going to be perfect. It just has to fit well, and for some reason I got so consumed with it that I would think, no, it, it can fit better. You know, the bum can, can look more flattering on, or this can, and I don't want to entirely get rid of that trait because I think it's really important because like I said previously, the fit is everything to me. Um, I know it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but on me it can be perfect because I can trial it so many times on me. So I have to assume that the next person that tries it, it might not fit them as well because it wasn't made, not made to measure because I do still use a 10 to 12 standard measurements if there's any such thing as standard um i'm just trying to give my buy the best chance of it fitting you well which is why i'm soon to be working with a pattern cutter for that so that if you buy something from me now you're going to know that six months or a year later if you decide hopefully to buy something from me again it's going to fit entirely the same even if the the design's completely different the um the ideal of my brand will will be solid and you'll know that you can come back and it'd be similar whereas at the moment i'm just change 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 but they're, they're improvements i think in my head so going back to why you keep your patterns 
and made all these improvements, all these improvements, and then I started to think like, oh, I've really reduced that, and I don't really like how that sits anymore. So then I looked back to my patterns from a year or 16 months ago, and I was like, damn, like, I had a good thing there. Why did I change that so much? Maybe there was a few improvements and tweaks I could make, but I had a really good thing there. I'm not sure why I changed that. Um, so yeah, that's something that I've learned. If you look at something, I don't know whether a lot of creatives do this, but if you look at something for too long, you start seeing you start seeing a lot of problems with it, and you don't want to do that. If something fits well, um, I think I do it. I know why I do it. Actually, it's not it's not a thinking thing. Um, I do it because I know that I lack some of the knowledge when it comes to pattern cutting. So I kind of think, well, that can't possibly be right because how could I have done that? Um, I don't have 30 years experience like some of the people that I've tried to work with. Um, and it's not just experiencing pattern cutting, it's experiencing lingerie or swimwear pattern cutting or activewear pattern cutting. The two are entirely different. Um, so yeah, which is why I believe, some of the times I might be wrong, but why swimwear, there is a lot of companies that do offer just basic swimwear. Now I sit in the realms of basic swimwear at the moment. I'm by no means pushing the limits of what we can do with swimwear but I will be honest and say the only reason I'm not doing that is because I'm limited by what I can what I can achieve with my patterns in my mind there is so much beautiful swimwear that I'm going to make happen and come to life um because it wouldn't be in there otherwise you know I'm not just trying to create this non-existent beach in my head where all these beautiful people are running around in these beautiful eccentric swimwear designs um it's gonna happen and i think the reason why we do have a lot of base not that there's anything wrong with basic swimwear but i don't know whether i spoke about this but monroe to me the reason why i started monroe obviously i had a huge desire to do something that was fashion based and um, that's what i studied in college I went on to study in uni for a year but left because I was quite soon, quite quickly realising that I was going to get in a lot of debt and I wasn't sure how much I could really take from that experience. Um, I wasn't someone that was just like desperate to go to uni to drink and that. Um, I loved to have like a good time when I, young, but when I was young but I think I started doing all that fun stuff, you know like going out with your sister's idea and stuff like that from a from a younger age that when I got to 18 I was like I just really want to do a job that I truly love um, and I spoke about this in my last video I think I didn't want to make the confusion of I have I'm self-employed self-employed and I have a business what you know what else do I need it's it's cool to be an entrepreneur nowadays um, but I, I didn't want to get caught up in the idea that well I'm an entrepreneur so I wanted I wanted to own a business doing something that I loved um, I do I do really like what we do I can recognize that more now that I've started Monroe I recognize that I do actually kind of enjoy eBay we call it eBay just because that's our sales platform I just think it's good to choose a job that's quite specific um, there's probably a lot of handmade clothing brands out there that's not to say that I don't want to do clothing at any point because I do because that is just still something that I love I do struggle to take pictures in swimwear you know when it's winter it's hard enough to sell swimwear in the winter anyway um, my demographic is probably women in the UK um, more so than it is international at the moment so I do still work with our seasons um, but it doesn't mean people don't go away in the winter and autumn and spring it just means that I can't really picture it at them times so I'm not really mad on doing flat lays but I, I will do them because this is another thing that I'm realising don't do things perfectly if it means they can't get done do them <laughs> just do them even if the pictures are bad or it doesn't illustrate what it looks like on um, it's better for me to do something than not do anything and I've always been that personality that's like oh, if I can't do that perfectly I'm not sure whether I want to do it at all like I think I just recognize 
and I think this could be applied to any clothing brand or business um, the nature of this the nature of swimwear I don't really know many people that feel good wearing swimwear I most definitely don't feel good wearing swimwear sometimes even my own swimwear I've, I've always thought of it as do I do I just want to reach for a basic t-shirt and leggings when I want to feel my best no I don't and wearing swimwear is quite vulnerable for a lot of people uh, it's quite a vulnerable experience to, I don't know, be on holiday, even if you're around your family, but go out and know that you're going to see, you know, Colin and his and his nan from room 403 round the pool and you're going to be in this swimsuit that you might not feel your best in. Um, I just saw the swimwear market as there's a lot of basics and I don't know whether I want to reach for a basic when I want to feel my best so maybe we should apply that idea to swimwear as well and there's certain things that we do to make ourselves feel better when we wear swimwear so we might you know throw on a kimono or wrap skirt and stuff like that so I just started thinking why do we not include or incorporate more accessories into swimwear that can make us feel more secure when we're wearing it um I'm all for self-love and building that and, and it does entirely start on the inside. Swimwear is just superficial to some degree, it's the surface um, and we should all be working to build it inside first because if you can do that then you're going to feel secure regardless of how you think other people think you look because we should not care about that kind of stuff. Um, but I just acknowledged, I think there's, I think we're overlooking something here. And I think we do need to start recognising swimwear is not much different to lingerie. It just it just felt like it's quite a delicate. It's a delicate thing, and we need to treat it with such. We need to put more consideration in when it comes to design. We need to be more cons more considerate about the fit. Uh, we need to think how do women wear swimwear? D d does a woman? When I say does, I'm, I, what I just mean is generally speaking, and I don't want to make um, generalisations, I don't know, but I'm just talking about me and I'm going by other women that I've looked at and just kind of lightly studying the market. And I think it's fair to say we do wear cover-ups when we wear swimwear. There is no reason why you can't, we can't adapt swimwear so that them cover-ups can be used in some way not so much when you're swimming but when you're in the water around the water on the beach so it's not so much like oh I want to get into the water but I don't want to expose myself oh, but I can't wear my sarong in that I can't you know what if I do want to go in for a dip but I don't want to wear my sarong why can't we incorporate a sarong that can be worn with swimwear that's non-granny like that can have frill and that can just be beautiful and the design can be really well thought out but it it plays a role we have a good association to clothing we know that when we wear a cardigan maybe we don't wear it for warmth maybe we wear that cardigan because we prefer not to show a certain part of our hip or and i'm not saying we should wear clothing to cover ourselves by no means am i doing that because like i said it comes from within this is all superficial and surface this is just what you're covering something in um, but we do want to lead with our best foot and there's probably we are all using clothing that we wear on a daily basis to make us feel more secure and comfortable and less anxious and stuff like that and, and I'm not by any means trying to incorporate things that are restricting in any way i'm just trying to give you the option if you want to wear the basic swimsuit if you want to wear this the basic bikini without these accessories fantastic i love that there might be the option for you to like take pieces and and play with them and that's the reason why i started this that's exactly what i want you to do i want you to you know maybe have the arizona suit and think that belt is going to look so good with with that brief or I don't feel the need to wear that today. You know, it's just stuff like that. So I know I spoke about the the want to bring in like beautiful sleeves and 
all these things, although they are very design led, they are they will also be be removable. So sorry, I'm trying to catch my breath. I should really have a glass of water or something with me because uh, when I get going, I get going. Um, these things will always be removable. There's a reason why, for example, the belted swimsuits, the belt isn't fixed. It can be removed. I'm not also going to assume for you where your waist sits. It's unfair. We we all come in a range of sizes and proportions. I want these things to, yeah, I want you to decide where they they fall and they sit and whether you wear them or whether you don't wear them. Whether you wear them because you like the design or whether you wear them because it does actually have a practical need for you. I just love the idea of that. So, so yeah, at the moment when you go on my Instagram, because that's the only thing that I really use at the moment, you will see that there is just a belted swimsuit and I'm not just going to make the home of belted swimwear. Although I do love belted swimwear um, and I loved it two years ago when I thought of the design and now I know you see it everywhere but I just still think it plays a huge role for my brand um but although see coming back to pattern cutting the reason why at the moment I do only have belt swimsuits and I'm just essentially making small durations so I started off with like a wider strap then I went down to a v-neck with a thin spaghetti strap now I'm at a bandeau the reason for that is the limitations that I was talking about a little while ago with pattern cutting. I am still looking for someone that I can work with. I can recognise at this stage that I'm not going to be able to do the pattern cutting in the way that I need to. If I was looking to just make a swimwear brand that was basic design led, so just talking about bikinis and swimsuits in different cuts, then I could probably fulfil that and I would probably work more on just trying to increase my pattern cutting skill slightly within that field but I'm not I do want to do sleeves I do want to do skirts and wraps and you know um cap sleeves and yeah just just a lot of beautiful things I have a lot of ideas that I want to bring into it and I almost want to make swimwear look more like clothing to some degree because it is possible it just has to be really well thought out and it's a lot more difficult but I do like a challenge which is why I picked it I just thought are you gonna see my really bad turn job because I'll be honest when I do my turn routine which I'll also be honest it's not a routine I don't do it enough so when I do put it on, I then just hope that that will last for a week, which it definitely doesn't. So what I do, I do my face, and then I do my arms, and I do my chest. Generally don't do my legs or my feet, or my mid torso. <laughs> you can't do your back, so I just do a bit of this. And I don't do all that, you know, trying to get round, trying to really struggle, because generally, I don't wear stuff like this. But now that I'm recording, of course I've got myself in something like this. So yeah, I'll try not to show that part, but if you do notice it, then that's fine. So, I started off today to make a swimsuit, but I haven't really got past pattern cutting, so maybe I'll stick with that. Maybe that's a good... Um, maybe what I could even do is just talk about different aspects of swimwear. I don't even, I'm not sure where that stuff that you like to see, but maybe we can talk about that because it's enjoy, it's enjoyment. Um, what have I got in front of me? How cool is this? Now, I mean my overlocker, my pride and joy. I love that baby. I knew that I could probably just have a domestic sewing machine, but I said to myself, I really want to have a domestic overlocker. Um, the fabric just responds so differently the seams are like in a different quality margin um so i went to this place in chelmsford called franklin's and i sat down and used it and i just couldn't believe it, it was so smooth and there's no sound it was just comfortable to use and when you're sitting at an overlocker for a very long time you do want it to be comfortable and obviously um that overlocker is built into the table so generally speaking even on industrial machines You'll have your table around the overlocker, which is where you'll have your fabrics in, 
Um, but then the overlock will actually be like exposed, it will be above the table, so your work surface will be like this, whereas that one, they've actually sunken it into the table. So it's just fantastic. And he said that this is the same overlocker that he sold to the Louis Vuitton manufacturing houses. So as soon as he said that, I was like, how much do you need for it? 